Number one, good coaching. Paul Taylor was the uh, district and region coach of the year. Gil Lynch passed up his senior year to come out and, uh, and coach us, and he was an effective compliment to, to Paul Taylor. Uh, we had great uh, offense, great hitting, led by Derek Shelton, but there were nine or ten other guys that could really swing the bat, and it was a powerful lineup. Uh, I remember a friend from Claremont uh, complaining after we beat them in a doubleheader that there's no easy outs on your team. Uh, your number eight hitter might as well be the number two cleanup batter. It's just that powerful. So hitting was certainly a strength. Uh, pitching, we had Jim Hogan, uh, Gary Sherman as our lead pitchers, Cecil Wright in relief, who uh, was just unhittable, frankly. Dave Ronquillo was a sophomore. So pitching was very strong. Team defense, just solid out in the field. Uh, we had team speed. Uh, guys like uh, Tosh Nita, Daryl Eidler, Flip Wilson, Davey Wagner could really move around the bases. Uh, depth, there was amazing depth on that team. There were guys sitting on the bench that probably would have started for any other team in the league. And it gave the coaches a lot of flexibility in terms of moving people in and out of the lineup, you know, as the need uh, came, without any effectiveness on the field. But most importantly was just the team spirit, the camaraderie, uh, the one for all, all for one, and uh, we're there to win. If he went 0 for 4 and we won, we were happy. And it was just a, a real dedicated team in that regard. Well, I think the, the thing that made it special were the relationships of the players. Uh, we had an excellent chemistry with the group, uh, and, and you have to have that to be successful. And so uh, everyone uh, was very supportive, everyone uh, backed each other up. Everyone knew their role and uh, the, the thing that impressed me about it was that uh, there were no egos on the team. Everyone just fit right in and, and did what they could to help contribute. You know the 65 team I think was successful. You know first you can say all the cliches that, that we were a team and we got along well and that was all true but it didn't hurt that some of us had career years that season. And as a collective group, pitchers, of which I was one, we hit almost 250, which wasn't bad, but there was never any talk of moving us to the top of the lineup either. But, but five of our eight hit over 330. And I can name Ted Akers, Bob Beck, John Jenkins, and Bill Townsend all hit between 330 and 390. Derek Shelton, our cleanup hitter, hit 447, set the career mark at that time of home runs with nine, and opponents walked him 29 times, and that was in 30 games. Our second baseman, Dave Wagner, set the school record at that time with 20 stolen bases. Our pitching staff still holds the record for the lowest batting average during the season at 241, and is second all-time in lowest ERA at 2.62. You can tell I did a little research here. But obviously, and we were a good defensive team as well, so Obviously, it all came together for a pretty special season. It was a pretty dominant team. We, uh, we did real well that year. We one bad hop away from making it to the national championships, frankly. My favorite memory is the district playoffs. Uh, being the league champion, we qualified. And they were played in, at uh, Brookside Field across from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. We defeated Cal Western 6-4 to four on a Friday, so now we were going to face Westmont for the championship on Saturday. And Westmont had beaten us at our field, and we had split a doubleheader with them in Santa Barbara during the season. So they were responsible for two of our losses during that season. And we trailed 4-3 to three going into the bottom of the eighth inning, and we rallied for four runs in the bottom of the eighth and ended up winning 7-4, to four, which qualified us to go to Medford, Oregon for the regionals, which was really exciting for a lot of us because at that time, you know, flying wasn't a big thing. and Most of us had never flown. So I don't know if we were more excited about the win or more excited about to being able to get on an airplane. But it was a great experience. And I might add 
that in, in the bottom of the eighth, that, that rally that we had, the first two runners got on, and Paul Taylor, Coach Taylor, he, uh, he substituted two of our fastest reserve runners. And it ended up, they both scored on ground balls. The, the, the tying run and the going head run were both scored on ground balls because of their speed and being the throw to the plate. Well, I had a, a couple of great memories. Uh, first of all, you know, winning the, the district championship and earning the right to go to Medford was, was uh, quite an accomplishment. And the, the second memory was this represented the first airplane flight that I ever was able to take. We flew out of uh, Los Angeles up to San Francisco and uh, switched over from a jet to a DC-3. Uh, so we take off the airport there and unbeknownst to me there's, there's a, a certain confidence that you have in that propeller pulling you upward and it, the, the sound was very steady and then all of a sudden it changed and this stewardess is walking down the aisle. I grabbed her and I said, what, what, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, oh, they changed the pitch of the propeller for cruising. Oh, okay, thanks for telling me. And then I'm sitting by the, the window over the, the wing, and DC-3's got two engines. Uh, for you young kids out there, that, yes, they were props. Uh, there's this oil coming out, just spewing out. So she's walking down again. It's, would you mind taking a look at that? Uh, it doesn't look real. Oh, it does that all the time. So that was my uh, introduction to airplane flight. I was hoping I'd make it and succeed, and, and I've never forgotten that trip. <laughs> coach Taylor, I think, had an impact on all of us. Uh, he was a unique coach and individual. He, he never raised his voice but there was never any doubt of you know who was in control he was extremely encouraging and, and he made you want to improve and, and everybody worked hard towards that goal his practices were extremely organized uh, he would come out with a, a set drill to be running for a set period of time and then you moved on to the next drill and i think we covered every possible situation that might occur so by the time the season started you know, we were pretty well prepared, I think. He was a, you know, an ex-Marine. He'd seen a lot. Very even keel type of guy. You know, if we were behind three runs or ahead three runs, his disposition was uh, just the same. He, uh, very confident in us, and, and we all wanted to do good for him. But uh, he wasn't a rah-rah guy. But his presence was, was felt at the practices and at the games. And if there was a time where uh, he needed to get on you a little bit, he, he could do it. I recall one time when I threw a bat, and uh, boy, I got an earful from Paul Taylor. Uh, you know, we don't do that kind of stuff. It'll mean a lot to the team because uh, they all know that, uh, that it was a good team. They all know that every single one of them played a part in the success of that team. Uh, it's been a long time coming. But uh, guys, we deserve it, and it's nice that uh, this team will be memorialized by its induction into the Hall of Fame with the other good teams and other good players. Well, what it means to me to be, for our team to be inducted in the Hall of Fame is that I saw us as a blue-collar group, uh, overachievers, hard workers, and for us to be acknowledged for that, I think that just uh, goes to prove that that that's a, a good uh, way to be, be, be a, you know, the work ethic, the uh, single purpose, uh, those things have value today as they did back then. Definitely would like to send out congratulations to the members that were able to show up today for this occasion and, and also acknowledge those that were unable to make it. Uh, special kudos, I think, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Dayton Dickey, who, uh, more or less spearheaded this and uh, we appreciate all the, the work that you, you put in for us, David. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Fame inductees, the 1965 Bulldog Baseball Team. Presenting the team awards is Jeff Martinez, Director of Athletics.